is up. Today is Wednesday, March 11th, 2020. This is J&J Boxing. I'm Blaze Jays. I'm here with my man Jordanski. What's going on? Yes, we are in the building. Coming to you live. You know, if you're watching the joint, well, you won't watch it after it's posted. But anyway, so we got some uh, we got some sports news to talk about. Some things going down in the motherfucking sports world. Some good fights coming up. First things first, man. The XFL this weekend. The motherfucking the uh, the uh, the defenders. I know they're playing the uh, the Dallas uh, the Dallas team. They're playing in the Renegades. Dallas Renegades. They're playing them. Going to be four o'clock Sunday at uh, Artie Field and shit. Should be dope. Should be dope. Think they're going to get to uh, four and two? Uh, they might. The Dallas team is actually pretty fucking good, though. They're down... Well, yeah, the Renegades. Down. The Renegades are two and three. They ain't pretty good. They ain't some slouches, too. Well, I mean, they lost to, to the Guardian 12-30. They lost to the Roughneck 20-30. They won. They beat Seattle 24-12. They beat Los Angeles 25-18. You know, Los Angeles just kind of just hit a bump. They are some lure. But, I mean, they lost to St. Louis 9-15. Um, so, I mean, I don't think they're... I don't think that was a bad loss. I don't even think the Houston game was a bad loss. I mean, lost by a fucking touchdown. So, that, that's going to be a tough game for the defenders. The defenders going to have to, like I said, once again, the defense is going to have to step up. I know Cardell Jones is starting, right? Yep. So, he's going to step up, too. Like, this is his, I would say this would probably be his last chance to, like, prove that he can he can really be the starter. Because if he doesn't, I'm pretty sure they ain't going to have no problem letting the backup come in. And then the backup run the offense. And now if the backup runs the offense, they're going to be able to run a more, like, a faster pace offense where it's going to be less passing and more running. But it was working for them in the last game. They was able to ground and pound for real. Even though they put up big points, but the defense was stepping up. They was that, that backup running back and that backup quarterback was actually pretty fucking good. Even the starting running back, like, they was like a good little tandem, like a three-headed tandem for real. They were able to push the ball. And he got some good passes in, too. But Cardo Jones, man... If he loses, if they lose this game, he's done, bro. <laughs> Man, isn't it crazy how highly we were ranking him, like, after the first two Nah, how highly everybody ranked him. He was coming in, and he was the best yeah, quarterback. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, the best quarterback in the league. But look at him now, and, and they always suck. They got suck. some film on him. You know what I'm saying? You know what would suck? And I would hate for this to happen to him. If he can't produce in the XFL. What makes you think he's going to produce in the NFL? But hey, maybe he can get it together though. Maybe I think he will. maybe the benching will be a wake up call of sorts, and it'll help him. Hopefully, he I think he will. Yeah, definitely. So let's uh, let's see what happens. How it all plays out. The um, the Roughnecks are playing the New York Guardians. Should be a decent game. Should I don't know what everybody's records is. I know the Roughnecks are five and zero, and I know the Defenders are three and two, and the Renegades are two and three. So. Um, Guardians, I don't know. I guess they good, or you know what I'm saying. But Houston been putting it on them boys, even though the controversy which came from Saturday's game. Well, they're gonna play again this Saturday, two o'clock on ABC. Tune into that joint. I'm gonna be tuned in, man. That joint be good quality programming to watch on a yeah, really on does. the weekend. We don't got no NFL. It really does. It's and ain't no bad. like hype basketball games. There's some really real. good. There's some really good. some good football. It's, they're not that bad at all. They actually put on some good shows. They it's competitive. Like you can see, motherfuckers. It's competitive. It's real competitive. Yeah, one hundred. But Houston, on the other hand, yeah. has been a breeze, and I think they're going to breeze through. The, um, they play the New York Guardians. I think they're going to beat the Guardians. The Guardians are three and two, but I think Houston's going to do their thing. And PJ Walker is a really great, is a really good quarterback, and he's showing some really good skill out there on that field. He's doing well. The whole team as a whole is actually doing really well. Now, I still got, man, I don't want to say it, but I mean I've been saying it the whole time since the start. I still got Houston versus DC in the championship game. I still got them. I still got DC making the way somehow, some way. Do yeah, I think Houston can go? Yeah, year. I, do I yeah. think Houston gonna go undefeated? I'm not maybe saying that. Not. Maybe they, not. They, they I think they might lose because sure, it's a possibility. That's what I'm saying. It's a possibility they can lose this week, but I don't think that they they're done yet. I think that they, I think they can do it. So just be on the watch. Be on the watch. Mm-hmm. 
100%. I was trying to see if I could see the XFL standings real quick. Because, like I said, I know, um, obviously, I know the Roughnecks are 5 0. Good. So, right now, DC is tied the way for first for St. Louis. Yeah, so and, oh, New York's and New York, still. So, um, Tampa Bay is 1 and 4. Um, the Western Conference, Houston leads the way at 5 and 0. Dallas is 2 and 3. Los Angeles 2 and 3. And Seattle is 1 and 4. So, for what it's worth. DC, that's what I'm saying. They're still in the game. Like, yeah, they're still, they're still in the game. we halfway through the season. In the game. And they said halfway, they're doing. Um, so this week was their first week that the Sunday games fell under a million. Uh, I think the DC game, which was going up against the Lakers, Clippers, and I was actually watching the DC game, which was going up against it. Uh, they did like 735,000 um, people watching the joint, and the other game, the late game, did like eight fifty, if I if I got that correct. So somewhere around there. But those were the last. You know, those were the two games that went under a million. But hey, attendance has been pretty good. You know, they've been doing their thing, and um, you know, so the, attendance went up. Uh, I I don't I don't remember I don't remember, but um, it probably stayed around the same. You know, I'm not 100. But anyway, so should we got some good stuff going down in the XFL? Make sure to tune into to that shit. Um, what do you think about, uh, they came out and reported that Dak Prescott, the Cowboys offered him $33 million a year for, with like $105 million guaranteed. Would you pay that? No. I think we talked about this on Saturday, too, on Sunday, Sunday, too. Nah, I wouldn't. I was talking about that with people at work. I've been saying that. I even, um, like, I gave examples of shit, like, fucking, let's say. We was talking about Tom Brady. Yeah, Tom, Saturday. yeah, Tom Brady, and, um, or let's just say, let's use him as an example. Tom Brady wants a contract. He going like I say, he's going with the um, with the fucking. He's going to resign with the Patriots. He deserves a fucking good contract for real. So, okay, he's produced. The key word produced. You can't go in there. Matter of fact, before I even say anything, let me let me just be fair to Dak because we all know Tom Brady's fucking playoff record is pretty goddamn impressive. So, and Tom Brady has six Super Bowl rings to prove that. So, I mean. You can't been to nine. <laughs> yeah, and like you can't really, you just nine can't. Son, it's crazy. So, um, what's what you looking at? His playoff record? Yeah, I think he's like, I don't know, like two and two, maybe. Ah, uh, okay, no. I can't go any further. Now. Go to go to NFL stats. So, yeah, Dak Prescott. Fact checking y'all. Hold yes, on. yes. <laughs> Dak Prescott, right here, stats. Let me find it. I forgot the name of the site. Uh, Pro Football Reference. We need this game by game show play. Show playoff passing. So he's played in three playoff games. He played in 2016 and won, and obviously they lost. And so he's one and two. Three playoff so, games. so he's won in two and three playoff games. And I think um, Romo won two playoff yeah, games. Romo won two, but who, Romo didn't take him to the Super Bowl either. He didn't produce either. Like I understand, everybody loves Romo. Romo is a good quarterback. In Partially the world. because of his announcing gig. Yeah, everybody loves him and shit. He he knows the game, but he didn't produce either. They didn't get Super Bowl Romo either. They didn't get close to get Super Bowl Romo. Maybe probably once. Or twice, but after that, with the Dez, Brian. Yeah, Kings, like sure. man, because if they had won that, they'd have gone to the uh, to the, the NFC the, Championship. Yeah, game. Yeah. but you know that was the last time you could. That's the last time you could say that they he did anything. So we can't even. I don't even want to say that. I'm gonna compare those two because what's the comparison for? Like what for what? Neither one of them won a fucking Super Bowl. Dak hasn't won one yet. He has a team that on paper the offense is actually pretty fucking solid. And on, and on defense, they actually are pretty solid, too. But their offensive line is probably one of the best, if not the best, offensive lines in the league. I mean, Zeke, when he when Zeke is there, you know, Dak can perform. When Zeke ain't there, Dak can't perform. Even when Dak has motherfucking Amari Cooper as a, wide, as a number one wide receiver, he still can't perform. Why am I going to give you... More than 33 mil, 105 guarantee. Why am I even giving you 33 mil, 105 guarantee? The motherfucking average for a quarterback in the NFL. An average. Are you serious? 
I think he's top 10, though. He's top 10, but he doesn't... Nah, man, he don't deserve it. Top 10, top whatever. Top 10, top schmim. Who cares? You won it two in the playoffs. You didn't do nothing this year. You went 8-8. Eight eight. Eight. Yeah. No, you don't deserve it. Go test the free agency. Go touch it. Or we're going to franchise tag your ass. And then we'll, re- we'll regroup next year and let's see how you perform this year. You might He might need that franchise tag for real. Like... What have you done for us lately? Because that's what Jerry Jones them can say to him. What have you done for us lately? We went 8-8 eight and, eight and we gave you a fucking squad. They gave him a squad for real. They went out. They even risked. They traded away draft picks to get Amari Cooper. A first round pick. Son, that's that's deep right there. That means we getting you tools. Like you say you wanted tools. We getting you tools, bro. And Amari's a free agent this year, too. So, so and then sure. what's keeping him there? What's keeping him there? Like we had a squad, we had two, we had tools, and why didn't we produce? Was it the coach? That's another thing I was saying. Like I didn't want to blame it all on Jason Garrett, but maybe it was the coaching, maybe it was the play calling. With Jason Garrett gone now, maybe the new coach was it Mike McCarthy, right? Yes. So maybe Mike McCarthy, and maybe him and Dak would gel together. Maybe uh, if they keep Amari, maybe those all of them can gel together. We know Zeke there, but bro, like was. What is this? Like, what's going on? Like, why do I need to give you this money? You didn't do nothing. So, no, I wouldn't give him that shit. Well, if you were Dak, would you accept that contract? Or would I you would. Be to I mean, more? no, I'm going to take that drink. It's 105. Guaranteed. 105 guaranteed, 33 mil. Over what, four or five years? Five, five years. So, I'm taking that drink. I'm taking, like, I'll, if, so you never know, because if, son, seriously, listen, because what if happens if he goes to Super Bowl? What is this, hypothetically, he takes the team to the Super Bowl? They go like, let's say you're 12 and 4, he has an amazing touchdown to interception ratio. He has a great percent, um, a great QB um, percentage or a QBR, how they say it now, and he's doing well. The team's doing well. They're clicking. They go to the Super Bowl, they win. I'm pretty sure this motherfucker can be like, they'll probably be like, all right, if you want more money, we'll probably redo the contract to give him more money. Or he's going to get a fat-ass bonus anyway. Like, you just led the team to the Super Bowl. You just brought us to the Super Bowl. And how many years? Probably like 10, 15 years we just got Super Bowl. Yeah, everyone wants 95. So, like, yeah, like, bro, years. like 25 years, goddamn. I said 10, 15, 25 <laughs> years. He'll get his money, man. Shit, 15 years ago was 2000. Julio was already, <laughs> Julio wasn't even due for a new contract. Julio wanted a new contract. He was holding out for a new contract. Julio got a grant, got a new contract after holding out, and he performed. Although they didn't do nothing, he performed. He was, and it sucks because of the QB, like, I can't blame, I got to blame Matt Ryan for not, for Julio not having double digit touchdowns when he performed that year. So he deserved a new contract that he got. If you perform, I'm pretty sure you'll get a new contract. You just gotta perform. The franchise, that's why I said the franchise tag would be good for him. And they resign, um, resign to Mark, Mark Cooper. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Hopefully, Dak accepts the 33. Or if I would, if I were Dak, I would accept that 33 million. So, uh, like I was saying, it should be interesting to see. Uh, you know how it shakes out, and maybe Amari doesn't come back. I can't see any way they let Dak go. I mean, at the very least, they'll franchise tag him. Maybe they should. I don't know. Maybe they should let him walk. Go find greener pastures. Like if I can't help you, go find somewhere that somebody that can't help you. Because obviously, franchise him and then draft a quarterback this year. Hell yeah! Trade up and try to get like Justin Herbert or something. He ain't going. They only get Justin Herbert. That'll be that's a that's a stretch. What if they trade it up though? What if they could get into the top ten somehow? I would try to get in the top fifteen. Still gonna have quarterbacks out there. Or they could get Jordan Love theoretically. They could they they can take it. Of Utah State? Because I'm pretty sure Jalen Hurts would drop at fifteen. But they were. I was seeing him projected to go between rounds two and four. Rounds two and four. That's what I was saying. Shit, if they run into, they can wait to round two and get Jordan. Um, Jalen Hurts. Hurts. They could theoretically. They got Dak in round three, right? I think Dak was in the fourth round. Huh? Damn, they got Dak in round four. Mm-hmm. And look how he turned out. He for a fourth round pick. He mm-hmm. he tur- he's he's deserving of credit, but he's not deserving of that, that the, big money that he's trying to get. The greatest quarterback ever, Joe Montana, was third round pick. Dak wants to be the highest paid quarterback. He just <laughs> no, you nah, man. Highest paid quarterback is like you mm-hmm. want some real shit. Like I don't think he wants to be the highest paid, but he wants to get what all the rest of these guys get. Like, shit, you know Mahomes probably about to get like forty million. 
You feel me? Like forty million what a year? Yeah, like forty million a year. That's not he yeah, he deserves it. Right. right. Super Bowl. Fucking Dak get like thirty three. I mean, that's, if, that's if about Dak, market price. Kirk Cousins got eighty four guarantee. So if Dak gets fucking, years, so that's like twenty. If Dak, if Dak take thirty three, bro, at yeah. the time, fucking Kurt was the highest paid because he got eighty four guarantee. Like he got the whole thing. Like that's crazy. Yeah, like, like, like son, 84. if he takes a one hundred five mil, that's like if he takes a one hundred five mil, bro, you your con- most of your contract is guaranteed to you for real. No matter what happens to you, you're going to get 105. If you perform and something happens to you, you still going to get money. I think Goss or one of them other guys got uh, like 100 million guaranteed, though. So, I don't know. Maybe Stafford or one of them got 100. So, anyway, he's he going to be right in there, though. And shit, 105 million guaranteed. They got 100 million. He has 105. He has five more million than them. So uh, like it's around that. 100. But anyway, I don't know the specifics. Of what other guys have gotten, but yeah, basically thirty three million a year. So theoretically, five year deal, one sixty five, hundred and five guaranteed, and shit, one hundred and five million guaranteed. Like that's life changing. So <laughs> shit, I I'd probably take that if I were that. Just like I said, interesting, interesting shit to see what's uh. See what's going on and shit. The uh, tournament, the Big Ten tournament's about to start here in the next. Uh, co- oh, did you want to add anything about about Mr. Prescott? You know his first name's Rain, right? R A Y N E, I think. <laughs> yes. Rain Dakota Prescott. <laughs> I thought that shit was pretty funny. Oh, and another thing I wanted to say before I got into the college basketball was, man. When did this shit start, though? Like, when did all these quarterbacks become such divas? And I say that because, like, it used to be that, like, quarterbacks never changed team. Like, starting quarterbacks, like, if you were kind of entrenched with a team, like, you always kind of stayed. Like, that's kind of how it was. Like, now it seems like every quarterback's trying to get more and more money. Like, hey, they just trying to outdo the last guy. Like, like hey, when did this shit start? Like, man, these motherfuckers be pressing shit to pay a quarterback, like, Kirk Cousins, twenty eight million a season, guaranteed eighty four million. He's, guaranteed. That's, that's, that's what it started was at though. You want to be serious? Like I think, I mean, it's probably started a long time ago. But Aaron Rodgers, it seems like bro, eighty four though. When everybody heard that shit, they was like, Kirk don't even deserve that. Like he didn't. Where what does what has he done? Like that's what people were saying. Like but I mean, he has. He's performed with the Vikings. They've done pretty well recently, but at the same time, they can't get over the hump. Man, next season's going to be his last year. That contract, I don't think I think they're going to let him walk. I think they're going to regret that shit. That they, that they gave him 84. Yeah. It's because, guaranteed money. Let him walk. He's going to go to another team. Still going to have 84 million in his pocket from y'all. Y'all nah, still got to That's the market money. for quarterbacks, man. That's what, that's what he got paid. He's going to go to another team and probably get another, like, this time, probably like 50 mil guaranteed. Not probably even more, though. Because he's not a bad quarterback. He just... Man, you know who um, got paid was... Um, was uh, What's his name? The Oklahoma quarterback, Sam Bradford. Boy, that motherfucker made a whole boatload of money. He ain't did shit. Sam Bradford? No, he played he played for the Rams. Oh, oh it's Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford. Bradford oh, yeah, that's right. The he, he got a whole boatload of money. He was the number one pick. Man, he got... He was okay, but yeah, injuries, injuries stopped him. But yeah, he got paid, paid. Shit, shit is fucking wild. But um, anyway, so the college basketball, the uh, the Big Ten tournament, that bitch about to start. I think it starts tonight, if I'm not mistaken, on the 11th. And then the 13th, Maryland, they're gonna play Nebraska and Indiana play tonight, and the winner of that game is gonna play Penn State. Maryland plays the winner of that joint. Maryland's third seed in the Big Ten tournament. Hey, let's get her. You know what I'm saying? And so the winner of that is going to play the winner of uh, Purdue, Ohio State. They're going to play Michigan State. And then so Maryland, if theoretically, if it's chalk, if everything goes how, you know what I'm saying, the top rank winning, it's going to be Maryland and Michigan State playing on uh the 14th. So, hey, man, shit about to get popping this week as far as the Big Ten tournament. Hopefully, Maryland can make a run. I'd be very excited, very happy. be great if we could get, like, a, you know what I'm saying, a number one seed in the tournament or something. I mean, in the uh, NCAA tournament. 
I'd be hyped about that shit, but right now we're projected two. And we got to get Michigan State back for what they did to us, though. Man, they beat us. They're on team. They're playing in Big Ten tournament. Beat us at College Park. Yeah, hell yeah. Wisconsin's on a nice little run, too, though. They've been balling. They actually got the number one seed. Maryland got a pretty good team this year. Maryland has the opportunity to go a long way in the NCAA tournament. They could fuck around and be a, um, a, five, uh, a lead eight team. Yeah. They can be a fuck around and be a lead eight team. And they just can keep winning, just beat some guys, beat some teams, and get on a nice little roll. It'd be interest, interesting to see how all that progresses. So, yeah, uh, like I said, if it's chalk, though, they'll probably get Penn State. Um, so that would be on Friday. Friday Friday the 13th. Oh, man. It sounds unlucky. And Penn State, you know, they beat us this year. We only played them once. They got us. Shit. Um, yeah. That's that's how she goes. Let me check. I did we play Penn State one MD bat MD versus Penn State. I thought we only played them once. I remember when they beat us. Duke is some shitty program. And you said Duke is some shit. Yeah. Why you say that? Because you know they just uh... they they is kind of iffy this year. I wouldn't say they some shit, but yeah, they are a little. Uh... I just think that if Cam Reddish would have came back, they might have would have been a little bit more competitive for it. They wouldn't be the way they are right now. It's just that one and done shit really crushed Duke this year. So, hey. But Coach K always bounces back, so it doesn't matter. It's, but what you call it? God, North Carolina is cheap. <laughs> We've been talking about it on the show. Yeah, Roy Williams is pissed. Yeah, I know he's probably not even in practice. I'm pretty sure he's like, <laughs> he's he's like dog. He's like y'all had some garbage. I fucking shoot around. Did they? I know. I know the ACC tournament started and UNC was like one of the lowest seeds. Let me see. Did, did UNC win? The, I don't even know who they played, but I know they did play the other day. UNC basketball. Oh, so they did win because they're playing right now. They're playing against Syracuse. They beat Virginia Tech. So, UNC was the 14th seed in the fucking ACC. Isn't that shit wild? Fucking UNC. This is North Carolina. This is where fucking Michael Jordan and James Worthy and, and uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Raymond Felton. And, you know what I'm saying, all the guys who went to UNC, like all them great players, Tyler Hansborough, all them boys. These motherfuckers the 14th seed. Oh, man, if it, if it was any other coach, if it wasn't Roy Williams, boy, they'd probably be looking at him a little funny, like, hey, Roy, uh, you you got to get God, you gotta get some players. For real, these boys is, these motherfuckers, 16-4 in the conference, 14-18 oh, um, overall, 7-8 at home, and 3-9 and on the road. They are... UNC? Yes. You talking about, yeah, UNC is... Garbage. Oh, hey, but they beat Virginia Tech. And they beat them pretty soundly. Beat them by 19 points. Or beat them by, uh, what was it, 22 points. My bad. And so, Man, Maryland was in this motherfucking conference. I know this time. We'd be cooking, dog. We'd probably be number one. Number one uh, seed. Damn, man. Y'all know that wrong. This is but, um, anyway, man. Some good stuff going on. College basketball, so I'm, I'm holding my, uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Hoping my boys can make a nice little run and shit. You know, um, but yeah, UNC is garbage. Them motherfuckers, yeah, they they fucking suck this year. So, they, you know what I'm saying? They lose. The only way they can make the tournament for real is if they went out, if they win the ACC. Like that's the only way, and I don't think that's just gonna happen. So, hey, but good luck. They uh they beat Virginia Tech. You know they know their season's on the line. Maybe I don't think so, but maybe they could get an NIT invite. You know what I'm saying? But. That shit sucks, too. Like, you hate when that shit happens. And they had Cole Anthony. That's Greg Anthony's son. I just... He was hurt a lot of the year, but God damn. That, <laughs> you never see UNC this bad. Shit's pretty wild. So, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how that game plays out. And Roy Williams' job is safe. The, UNC's not about to fire Roy Williams. Uh, they, ain't but they, they ain't looking at it. They, bro, they like, Roy, you got to get you a nice recruiting class this year. God yeah. Damn, yeah, he probably <laughs> thought this was going to be a good recruiting class. Bro, I'm sure they got good players on the team. I just, they, they just not, just not, they just haven't gelled. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's him. Roy said it like two months ago. He said, this just isn't a very talented team. <laughs> We Dang. just, we just, how, how, you know when your coach says that, you know, it's like, oh, God, shit. 
Like, damn, I go to UNC, but I'm some shit. Yeah, bro, we a bad yeah, team. Michael with Jordan, you. go ahead. Like, God damn. A lot of great players did, and they've, they've had Vince Carter and Antoine Jameson and Jerry Stackhouse. And, like, they had guys. Like, guys have played against played on the court. Michael Jordan played on um, disrespecting this joint like that. Got the coach saying that's Roy Williams, one of the greatest coaches in college basketball history. And he yeah. got him saying that. God And he recruited you. Oh, yeah, it's like that, two probably, months ago. that probably hurts his soul. Like, I recruited you guys. These guys aren't talented. Just you faked me out. That's what you probably like, <laughs> faked me out. You know how it is, man. Guys be looking good on the high school level, and then you'll have them go to college, and these motherfuckers be like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of suck. God damn. But anyway, yeah, so that's the situation. I, I think Florida was in that conference. Oh, yeah. Florida, Florida would probably be Rams good. Suck. Y'all was a decent team last year. I don't even know what y'all did. I haven't really seen y'all in the top 25. Um, so, yeah, it must not have been that good of a year, man. Hey, Florida was good when they had Billy Donovan. And then, you know, he, he doing his thing with OKC, too. You know, uh, OKC was surprisingly actually doing pretty well. Surprisingly. That's like, he, it's funny because Chris Paul left the Rockets. Westbrook went to the Rockets. Harden and Westbrook in the Rockets. And them motherfuckers playing small ball, that shit ain't look like it's not working out. The, and OKC has a better record. And mm-hmm. that's what I was about to say. Like, it, that's that's crazy. Like, remember, that's just, remember in the summer, Chris Paul wanted to trade. He wanted to get the fuck up out of it. And that's just crazy, though. It's like, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. They sent Chris, they was like, it's supposed like they sent Chris Paul there to, to die. Like, but nah. He they, said, they, they, they came to life. They rose yeah, from the like, ashes. I don't get that, that small ball shit. I don't think that can work. Yeah, I think that shit's retarded. Like, I don't think so. Bruh, it's not even today's NBA. Today's NBA is more seducive or, or is, you know, can can have the small ball lineup. It could be more successful today than any other time. It, that shit would never would have worked. Bro, that shit would have worked in 1955. Like, you know what I'm saying? They would have probably been good then, but you can't have a lineup where you don't have anybody over 6'6". Six, six. And I think they do have, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they signed the dude from PG County. The dude went to Georgetown. Um, Green. Green's his last name. Forgive me, but he's like 6'9". Um, so anyway, so, you know what I'm saying? They maybe. trade away the center. Yeah, I know. Damn, what? Yeah. Oh, man. That was, I was Clint Capella. Yeah, that shook my head, man. I was like, I, I, don't, I don't understand it either, but it is well, what it is. Like you said, it's just, it's just mind boggling to me because OKC is probably pretty good. Yeah, Billy Don was good. Dude, as a, because um, I know you used to fuck with Maryland back in the day and shit, and, and shit, and you, you switched allegiances, you went to Florida and shit. But um, do you fuck with like Joe Key Noah or like, what was his name? Um, yeah, had another dude on their team. I think Corey, Corey Brewer and shit. Do you like fuck with those guys like who won the two national championships? Joe King, Joe King Noah, I fuck with because Joe King Noah, that's because I, I switched to Florida football and I was like, you know what? I'm going to switch to Florida basketball. He, I actually watched that fucking game and I was like, damn, this man tight. And I fuck with him when he went to the Bulls too. Like he had like a little edge, man. I like Joe King Noah. Mm-hmm. Joe King Noah's that dude. I fuck with him. Yeah, I have a nice little team. Um, I'd have to look up the roster. I forgot he was the one who was on the national championship. Yeah, y'all won two back to back. It was somebody else that was on there with him too, the point guard. I forgot a fucking um I I need to see the roster. But yeah, y'all had a nice little y'all had a nice little squad. Because they was on Sports Illustrated, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. They was on mm-hmm. Sports Illustrated. I got All right, yeah. I was gonna say, let me pull that shit up. The, um, the Florida Gators uh uh national championship teams. Cause y'all had a nice little starting five. Florida. Let me let's see. What was it two thousand seven? Florida Gators uh, basketball. Y'all motherfuckers was was cooking shit. And y'all football team was good too. That was around Chris Leak and Tim Tebow. Y'all had uh, let me look. Here's the oh six oh seven team. Uh, Al Horford. Al Horford and shit who plays for the Celtics. He was on that. That's who I was thinking of. Corey Brewer, Joe Kim Noah. Uh, uh, Maurice uh, Maurice Spates and shit. Remember him? He was a freshman on the team. I don't know how many minutes he was getting, but remember him when he played for the Warriors? Spates and then, so I guess I don't know who I was thinking about the point guard, but um, anyway, yeah. So, but that was y'all big guys. Man, right there, Al Horford too. I mean, uh, Al Horford, yeah, 
Yeah, um, Joe Kim Noah. I think Joe Kim Noah and Al Horford. Yeah, that, that, that was, they was they the was big sports, two. They won Sports Illustrated. Mm-hmm. And Corey Brewer was a pretty good player, too, so he was running the three. Yeah, y'all had a nice little squad. Y'all had a nice little team, man. Yeah, because on Sport of Football, you had Tim Tebow, Jeff Gibbs, Percy Harvin, Aaron Hernandez, <laughs> fucking Cam. They should do a 30 for 30 on the 2000, was it, 8 we Florida Gators? <laughs> and we were squad did. And we had, uh, who was it? It was not Tequila Spice. It was Tequila. No, it wasn't Tequila Spice. It was, uh, who was it? Brandon Spice. Brandon Spice, yes. He went That's yeah, because yeah. Tim Tebow and Brandon Spice were in the same room doing recruiting. And Tim, they was like, it's, um, it's, Tim said, is he going here? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to the team. So I fuck with the, um, I fuck with the Florida Gators. I was... That was my squad. Hey, on the 08 team, y'all, Chandler Parsons. I even remember when we motherfucking lost to goddamn Alabama in the SEC championship. I was like, damn. That was the end of the beginning. Yeah, the <laughs> beginning of the end. You mean, you said end of the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I know what I mean. Yeah. That nigga, damn, that shit hurt. I'll never forget, Tim took off his helmet. He was on one knee, hoping that they missed. Damn, they, they scored. Shit, they stormed the field too. Like, yeah. Yeah, I remember that game. That's what was it like? Two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah. Man, beat his house. That was yeah. That was that. And that was I the year, that that was the year Tebow won the Heisman, right? Yeah, and I think we was trying to Tebow was, was trying seven. to. Um, I think it might have been that. Nah, oh seven. I think he won the Heisman. Oh seven. He was going for Bradford won it in no way. One, it was something like that. Somebody because Tebow anyway. was supposed to. It was going. It was like Tebow could make history and get two Heisman's. Yeah, but we was but that oh eight team was like that. Like, didn't two peat? Didn't Florida two peat? Florida two peat. No, they won in 06. They beat Ohio State with Chris Leak, and then I think they won again in 09, I think. I think they won one of them years. Sebo was won. He won a national championship. championship. Uh, maybe it was a. No, nah, it wasn't back to back, though. I know it wasn't. Florida football national championship. See, we, we ain't even talking about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about? We gonna talk about rapping this? Nah, football national championships. Cause I remember in oh eight when y'all lost. Nah, so y'all did win and y'all won in oh eight. So what? Well, that might have been oh nine when y'all lost to Bama. Y'all won in oh six and oh eight. In ninety six, back when y'all. Was That's what it was. Oh seven was the promise when we lost, and Tebow was like, "I promise we won't lose another game." And he won the Heisman that year, right? Yeah, that was a sophomore year. That was it. Junior year, y'all won the national championship. So, which, so it might have been oh nine when y'all lost to. No, we lost to Bama in oh nine though. Yeah, because I, re- I remember that shit. And Bama went on to beat Texas in the national championship. Yes, that's that's, that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Man, that, that shit was crazy, dog. Yeah, man, that was some crazy times. Like, man, college football was like that back then. Like, that shit was official. So, anyway, man, just some interesting shit going down in the sports world, going down in the NCAA, going down all across the motherfucking board. Um, so to get into the fight, Shakur Stevenson is fighting this weekend. Some guy he should be. Um, I should probably know who, who the fuck this fight. You know he's fighting off top. You don't. <laughs> we so we boxing fans. We don't know. We gonna see this weekend. Um, I'm sure he's the favorite. I'm sure he's expected to win that motherfucker. I'm pretty sure this is just a slouch matchup, just to give him somebody in between the big fight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until he can get to, uh, whether it be Tank or uh, whether well, he has to move up first. But yeah, he, he should fight Gary Russell Jr. That's who he should fight. Uh, <coughs> you heard they announced Oh, I, I texted you. They announced an opponent for what's his name that, for the fight we go into on the seventeenth. Um, the dude Jerry Forrest. He was supposed to have beaten. He's from Newport News. He was supposed to have beaten. It was a real close decision. He lost. Um, he lost to uh, what's his name Jared Washington back in like twenty fourteen. But he hadn't lost since. And he lost to this other guy, um, this dude who's undefeated, uh, like Jeremy Franklin or something like that. But he said it was a real close fight. And a lot of people think Forrest should have won. So, been pretty good. He hasn't lost since that one, which was, I think that was like 2018. Or it might have been 2019, early 2019. Had, hasn't lost in a year. Going to fight um, Hergovic. Should be interesting. You know what I'm saying? He could definitely give him a good fight. 
definitely good opponent at this point. That whole fight card is interesting because I really that that main event that makes it complete uh, though. You know what I'm saying? The main event though, Pro Grays and Hooker. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. Pro Grays and Hooker is gonna be a is gonna be like a very it's close, be, close, very even, even fight. Yeah, it is. I think so, and it's gonna be like a stylistic matchup because you got a long, tall fighter versus uh, a shorter opponent who can who's it's actually, probably more skilled though. Yeah, I think that's what I say. Who's actually more talented when it comes to boxing? Like he actually progress is a great boxer. I'm not saying Maurice isn't a bad is a bad boxer. He's a good boxer as well. But I think that. When it, uh, I think that when it comes down to it, I think progress can help box him. But Maurice Hooker still has that knockout power that if he lands, if he can use his reach well and he's able to, you know, establish his jab, he can maybe set up uh, one, of, maybe set up one of his big right hands. And you never know. I mean, I don't think progress can. I don't think he can knock progress out. I don't think progress will get knocked out in this fight. I don't think Maurice Hooker gets knocked out in this fight. I think that it comes down to points. And when it comes down to points, I think that the smaller fighter is going to win in this in this situation because I think Progress is a better boxer. And I think he's going to find his way inside. I think he's going to find his way to neutralize the reach early on in the fight, which will throw Hooker off, and that will help Progress become the aggressor instead of him having to fight on his back foot. So I think that'll be a, I think that'll be a good matchup. But I still got Progress going. Um, when they all said and done, it goes down. Progress wins by decision, unanimous decision in twelve. So. Hopefully it's a good. Hopefully it's a good matchup. Hopefully yeah, we need mm-hmm. to see something exciting. I One, think we will. One hundred percent. And then the fight before that, the co-main event is Luke Campbell versus Javier uh, Fortuna. Should be a good fight. If I mispronounce his name, I'm sorry. You feel me? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the best with pronouncing names. But yeah, that should be a decent fight too, though. Um, even though he had lost to uh, the dude uh, Fortuna, uh, he had lost to. Uh, Sosa, the guy who lost to virtual, and I was like, man, if he lost to him, he must not be all that good of a, like, you know what I'm saying, but it, maybe that could have been a while ago, you know, it could have been a different time, could have been a different uh, uh, Sosa, dude, so, hey, he's going against Luke Campbell, Luke Campbell gave uh, Lomachenko a pretty good fight, Lomachenko clearly won that joint, but Luke was definitely getting some shots in, I, I remember watching it with you, it was like, I was never nervous, nervous, but I was getting a little, like, a little antsy, I guess. Like, wow, yeah, we taking a yeah, little, little, little one answer, like, too many big he, um, shots. Unanimous decision, right? He won a unanimous decision. Unanimous yeah. decision. Um, Luke Campbell ain't no slouch. He I gave think him a fight. He gave him a great that's fight. That's going to be a good fight, too. I, I forgot Luke Campbell was on the, was the co-main event. Yes, yeah. So, Luke Campbell, I think he's going to put on an impressive display. He's really, he's really good. I don't good. know too much about his opponent, but I know he's going to put up an impressive he, display. He's a good record and shit, though. He, the only thing was, like I said, we were looking at his record, and he lost to the dude. Jay, I think his name was Jay. Jason Sosa, if I'm mistaken, I'm sorry. Jason Sosa ain't no slouch. He lost to Bertrand. Remember, Bertrand was kind of teeing off on him. They was going at it, and Jason Uh, Bertrand overpowered him. Bertrand was hitting him. Hard dog. It was, but which one called it? You it was so beat, so beat, beat cuz. But yeah, like I said, I don't know how long ago it happened. It was, it was probably a couple years ago. So it definitely could be a different situation. And you never know with boxing, as we saw on Saturday. You know, with uh, with what's his name, Kanaki. Man, Kanaki, man, he's man. That's tough. But he has to switch the way he fights. That that's that all goes to the way he fights. Brawling is okay sometimes, but. You gotta, you gotta have your guard up, and you gotta be watching out for those shots, man. Cause you're leaving yourself open when you're going. I mean, the spurts are good when you landing and you connecting, but when you're missing, that's when the the countering, dude. Yeah, that that first knockdown they called a slip, son. He caught him with a nice joint. It was like a little hook, and it was boom, and he just fell. And I knew that joint was no sin. He fell. That shit was crazy. So I know Kanaki can bounce back with it. It's just like boxing. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. At any given moment, anything can happen. No, I feel that. I feel that 100%. And so, you know, that's the beauty of boxing, man. When you go to a boxing match, you never know what the fuck you're going to see. You know what I'm saying? When you're watching TV, you never know what. Boxing is, it's, you know what I'm saying, it's like reality television, but this shit is really real. Like, (laughs) you feel me? Ain't no scripted shit. I mean, you got your corrupt shit in boxing, but um, anyway. So, yeah, man, should be a really good card. Um, we got Daniel Dubois. He's fighting on April 11th versus uh, Joe Joyce. I'm, I'm taking Dubois. I think he's going to get that dub. Uh, you know Joyce is, like, 33? 
Yeah, oh yeah, old dude. He fought at the 2016 Olympics. Okay, we steal this pie. Bro, I'm just saying, like, four years ago, he was fighting in the Olympics, bro. He was 29 years old. That's an Olympic box. He started late. He didn't start boxing until he was, like, 22 type shit. A lot of people who got the boys winning, but I don't know. Like, a lot of people had, um, when they were Joe Smith Jr. versus Jesse Hart, a lot of people had Joe Smith Jr. winning. A lot of people had Jesse Hart thinking that Jesse Hart was going to do that shit, and then he got, he got beat. Oh, no, that's right. A lot of people thought Jesse Hart was going to win. He was a 3 1 favorite, yeah. Yeah, yeah but Joe Smith Jr. won. So that man, that, sh- that shit was man. That was a, this, that was uh, a good fight. I, is, I, I, man, I love that joint. The boys versus choice fight though. They've been talking a lot of shit with each other. They they've been building this. They've been building it up, even though it's not being really like because they're two British British it's, fighters. But over in Brit- um, but over in England, that shit. Oh, bro, really that shit's up. like it's like a big fight. That's a really 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 big fight over there. And that's that's, a, that's like it's uh, really really a big fight for the up and coming heavyweights for real. So that's a that's a big fight, and I don't. Know too much about either one. I looked some stuff up about it. I've been following their their um their comp their like their fight um their fight presses and all that shit. So I've been following that. But, um, I, I don't know. I'm just saying fifty fifty for me. Yeah, yeah. No, fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. People can favor um, Daniel Du Bois, and then um Joe, um Joe Joyce can come out there and, and knock his ass out. But I don't think Joe Joyce is gonna do that. But it's, it's always possible, though. You know, it always could happen. Um, what was the next one? Oh, on the 21st, and it's going to be on the zone. Dortigas versus Breedis. I want to watch that joint, man. I think they're probably, you know, the of the cruiserweight still remaining. These motherfuckers is probably the best. Like, that's probably the best in the world at the, you know, a cruiserweight because you should win up to heavyweight. Um, I think that joint's going to be an exciting fight. I'm looking at who's on the other card. I don't really know nobody else, though. Um, and then on the 28th of March, the very next weekend, on ESPN, Peter B's fighting that Chinese guy, uh, Meng Fanlong. Shit, that should be a good fight right there. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Fanlong's probably going to get his ass whooped, but shit, Peter B beat him, and then maybe he could go and fight um, uh, Bivol. Um, uh, Dimitri Bivol. Bivol. They both got the belts in light heavyweight. Yeah. Right, both of them, because both of them are official. You know what I'm saying? That'd be a good fight, B to B versus Bevel. I think that'll be like the biggest fight in the light heavyweight division. Man, and I, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it, bro. Tight. Yeah, no, nah, and and I love that. Um, you know what I'm saying? That um, B to B fought um Gavaki. That's why I some. That's why I was. That was some that shit, shit was about, great. That's why I was mad about the Canelo joint. It was some sucker shit. You gonna pick the weakest dude with a belt in the division to fight when you could have fought? Yeah, some you could have fought some. Hey, if he'd have fought Bevel or uh mm-hmm. or B to B, that might have been him who got folded up like a lawn chair. You feel me? So, um, yeah, we got that joint on the 28th, and that joint's going to be on regular ESPN. And then um, we got the fight we're going to. I talked about Joyce and um, and the boys. And uh, on the 25th of April, uh, what's his name's fighting? Um, uh, I know he. I know he's fighting um, fighting the guy. I don't know who he's fighting. But, yeah, man, we got the some good... fight was amazing. The noise last fight versus Donaire was amazing. That yeah, was that joint nice. was... It, it really was. That was a classic display of boxing. They both was. Dan Donaire had him had him a little fucked up a little bit. And it's funny because his brother was on the other car and his brother lost his fight because he was showing off his brother. I think his brother got stopped. Uh, <laughs> damn, that shit was crazy. I thought we was gonna see both brothers lose, and I was like, damn, son, stay up till six in the morning and watch that. Son, if Donaire had beat him, that would have been a shock. But man. Donaire was giving him a good Donaire fight. Was it was kind of like the Luke Campbell and Lomachenko joint. Like, like Lomachenko took it late. Yeah, but Donaire had him hurt. Had yeah. him hurt a couple times in the fight. 100. 100. No, I feel you. I feel you. That was a tough-ass fight. They was going at it, To dog. see the first time to see him fight for me being at... Well, no, I seen him because I watched the other shit. I watched his little pre-fights and stuff and everything. But to see it actually live the, for the first time... Son, that shit was amazing. Like, the kid can box, so his next fight, I don't know. Hope his opponent brings his brings his A game because if he doesn't and he's, and he's loafing that night, man, I know he's going to punish him, bro. Like, he, that kids can box, man. That kid can box. On the, um, yeah, 100. On the same day, fucking Kovalev's moving up to Cruiserweight to fight Sullivan Barrera. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I hope he gets a beat. I hope Bray beats him. Bray is not that bad of a fighter. He's a Cuban guy. I know who he is. I've heard of him. He has a couple losses, but he's 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 solid though. 
He's solid. So I think he can beat Kovalev. I hope he does. Both of them are all, all the fighters, obviously. Kovalev needs to retire. It's time, bro. After what Canelo did to you where you had that joint and blew it. Got knocked the fuck out. Fucking terrible. Um, and the other joint was, um, was it May 23rd? Is going to be Usyk and uh, Gary Cesar. Yeah, yeah, uh, Cesar. Did you do? Um, who you think going to win that joint? I'm going to give Usyk a fifty-one forty-nine edge. Ooh, fifty-one forty-nine. It's only because Cesar is an older. Yeah. Even though I don't think the A shit it means anything, I still I've seen Dirk Cesar fight and. And most of the times when he lost, he lost, lost. So if Derek Cesar comes out there not gamed and not ready, he's going to lose. But the experience, hey, and he's been in the heavyweight division for a long time. Usage is just coming up. You never know. The experience. This ain't no walk in the park. This ain't no, what do you for, Michael Hunter or something like that? Who, who did Usyk fight the first fight? Usyk, you, oh, no, he fought, um, uh, what's his name, um, the one guy's uh, cousin's nephews, uh, whatever. Fuck, uh, yes. Tim Witherspoon, Tim Witherspoon, uh, Chaz nephews, Witherspoon, whatever. who hadn't fought since twenty twelve. So this ain't <laughs> yeah, this ain't it. I mean, I say my no disrespect to Michael Hunter, because Michael Hunter is actually a pretty good boxer. And he's like, you should be heavy. you should be Michael Hunter though, back when they was cruising. Yeah, but shit. he's a really he's a good boxer though. For real. So no disrespect to him. Michael Hunter was big. He because he probably knew he was going up to heavyweight. He was like, man, let me fight these. I can beat this fool. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> she got real. <laughs> so, uh, he, I don't know how the fight went, but this yeah. ain't no um, no walk in the park. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fifty. Soria, he, he's Pesoria definitely is a good opponent. Yeah, one hundred, one hundred. He just has to come gamed, and he has to come ready for that shit. He has to be ready to fight a younger opponent, uh, probably a more skillful opponent at this point in time because because of the age gap, and um, this why I have to really try to conserve himself in the ring because of the age gap as well. Usyk's probably going to have a lot more energy because he's a younger fighter. So if he can just come in there and use his experience to his um, to his advantage and come in there and use his wits and use his skill because he's not as slouch. Derek Cesar is not a slouch either. He yeah. uses his skill, then you never know. He might, because I'm pretty sure he's the underdog, so you never know he might upset the boxing world. That's right. going to put him right in the running for the... It, this is for the WBO title. Right? Yeah, for the WBO um, to be Joshua's mentor. Shit, if he, if he wins this, now he's Joshua's mentor. So, hey. 100. No, 100. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, should be good. For, I heard that joint was originally supposed to be in March, but they moved it back to May 23rd for whatever reason. I guess some of the other dates got taken. And um and Yusuf, he who has fought fights at the National Harbor, he um his heavyweight debut was supposed to be at the National Harbor. He was gonna fight Carlos Tecum, the African fighter, but um he eventually pulled out and shit. And so anyway, uh he took that basically a tune up fight versus uh, Chaz Witherspoon. And anyway, so he's gonna take this is gonna be his first like legitimate test, um, in the heavyweight division and uh should, I don't know, maybe Joshua will get stripped of the belt, and maybe it will be for the... Maybe that's what they're waiting for. They're going to try to get the... So Josh will be stripped by them, so he can, it can be for the WBO See, championship. If that happens, if... You know, it'll be another ripple effect, because if that happens, say that happens. I'm going to do hypothetical. Cesaro wins, Yusuf loses. Cesaro becomes the WBO champion. Now Cesaro is in a running for... It. For fucking title shots, cause he can unify. So mm -hmm. things, this joint is a, it's just. Music might try to get a rematch. Man, you never know. You never know, but he, but that that was for the belt, so you can't just go for automatic rematch, cause it's not a clause in there. That was for the belt. Oh it's, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. The yeah, there's no clause. You yeah, you're right. Out a deal, you can be like uh, a rematch. Cool, I'll take the rematch, but. If great if you it got knocked out, we'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, but shit, that's crazy, but. You never know what's going to happen. I got said 51 49 only because Yusuf. of Usyk, but at the same time. Because of his age and shit, yeah. Even though I don't believe in the age shit, but Usyk is a skilled fighter. Usyk is like that. He's been a, the undisputed champion in the Cruiserweight division for a long time, so coming up to heavyweight, even though he fought a bum, is still is saying something. So I He's mean, still a threat. Person, he's he not is. a bad only fighter. Per, only person that can have done it was fucking Evander, so hey. 
Well, a couple guys have tried. <laughs> yeah, the only person who can really do it is Evander. Yeah, yeah real shit. Um, so, yeah, man, that's uh, that's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you heard Julian Williams um, decline the rematch to fight Rosario. What you think taking, about that? Taking some time. Yeah. And Deontay Wilder um, said he would he uh, he wouldn't like turn down an offer to uh, go see George Foreman either. So I don't know what's going on with that. Hopefully he does do it. Like, and decided to keep Mark Breland and kept keep the same team. And uh, supposedly they're going to go fight July 18th against Tyson Fury. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what goes down. We'll see what happens, man. Oh, and damn, Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis agreed to fight December 2020. Something that I don't like about that. I wanted to mention that in the show. We don't know what's going to happen between that time. And another thing is, who are we going to... Hopefully, we see behind Garcia. I mean, hopefully, we... But see, that's one thing that I'm afraid of because that's not testing Ryan Garcia. Because now, you're going to fight a high-caliber opponent in Javante Davis who's a high-volume puncher and who hits heavy as shit. They call him little... They call him Tank. He like the they say the Ryan Garcia son, is likes that. Ryan Garcia now. is likes that, but Tank is likes that too. I think it'd be a fifty fifty fight. It will be a fifty fifty fight, but I don't think no, I don't think it's only fifty fifty. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think it's a fifty fifty fight. I don't know. Ryan Garcia has to be tested. If once I see him tested versus a game opponent, then I'll be like, all right, cool. I seen cool. his last knockout. Cool. We seen cool. Tank fight game opponent. Gamble was it was a game opponent. That was his best. Man. That was his best, and he put up a good performance. Yeah, Even Garcia's, though Gamboa was hurt, he put up a good performance. Garcia's likes that. But you, you know how boxing is. Like, we agree we're going to fight in, you know what I'm saying, at the end of 2020, but we're going to have a tuna fight in between. If one of them loses the tuna fight, then it's like, all right, that's just all. Yeah, you know so what that's saying? what I'm saying. They agree to do that. But yeah, that's I, I think, I think I'm that's saying, great. I want to see him get tested. I want to see him get tested. I got to see Ryan Garcia get tested. Hey man, all this shit about fighting, you coming up as a top prospect, you fighting, you not fighting nobody. So let's see you fight somebody first. People have called him out. Devin Haney has called him out several times. Devin Haney has even went to Bernard Hawkins, who works for him, and said, "Hey, what's up? We want to fight. We want the match. We'll Second we'll date. We'll see, yeah, like so. It doesn't matter. You got people out there calling him out. Like people out there calling. And him he out about to him. take one tank first. And so let's see what happens. Hopefully he can. If it happens, it happens, hopefully. But, um, yeah, that's that's going to be something to see. But I don't know. He has to be tested. Yeah, 100, 100. So, anyway, we're going to cut the show a little short today. You know, we got some shit to do. We just eight minutes, you know. Whatever. We're close enough to the hour. So, um, yeah, this was J&J Boxing. Anything you want to add about wrestling, AEW, any of the shit going on, like, share, subscribe. Wash your hands. Yeah, and what, yeah, make sure to wash your motherfucking hands. <laughs> Alright, All right, y'all. Take safe, it easy. Keep your safe, guard up. Be safe.